Inspired by the work of Edith Cowan, we set out in 1991 to transform lives through education and research, giving our students the tools they need to take on the world. We've come a long way in our 30 years, growing into a modern, vibrant university and accomplishing some pretty incredible things. We've earned a spot in the top 100 young universities worldwide, with our teaching quality consistently ranked among the best in Australia. Our campuses have world-class facilities for teaching and research with great places to study and relax. And the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts at ECU is one of the most celebrated performing arts academies in the world. We pride ourselves on our forward thinking, delivering up-to-date theory and skills to tackle the problems of tomorrow. And with the announcement of the new ECU City Campus, our future looks brighter than ever. I'm Helen Browning, um, filmmaker, just recently did Under a Pig in the Sky. And I'm Caroline. I'm Caroline Tully. I'm a pagan and witch and an archaeologist, and I was um, a consultant I, oh, and an interviewee um, on H Helen's film. Okay, thank you. Uh, so did you actually uh, know each other before you started on the film or just a friendship that came through the film? Yeah, no, we we didn't know each other. It was it was wonderful to meet Caroline. Well, we met in two thousand and eighteen, didn't we? And we contacted each other back a lot before that. Yeah, when did we do that filming? Was it eighteen? Yeah, June two thousand eighteen. So um, I got onto Caroline through internet searching, which is pretty much how we found everyone for the film, scouring the internet and reading and books, reading. Um, articles people had written and um, and so I met Caroline early on in the project and also um, Julie Brett who's in the film and Tim Ospagan and and you guys really helped me find everyone in the film pretty much I think. But yeah. Yeah. Where did the idea of the film come from? What made you think I want to make a film about you know pagans in Australia? Um, well, um, I was back in 2017, my sister was researching uh, a novel about um, magical traditions in um, late 19th century. And, um, and we just got started talking about it and thought, oh, how, how do people practice paganism in, well, I live in Darwin, I'm in Brisbane at the moment, but normally I'm in Darwin. Uh, with, um, you know, the Larrakia, there's seven seasons and so completely removed from the seasons and, um, and the skies and everything that the traditions are based on. So that's how I started thinking about that and then just really got my interest and I, I tried to make something in Darwin. Um, I sort of started, that was my first thought, I'll do um, pagan in the tropics sort of thing. <laughs> and um, I guess most people are solitary yeah. practitioners there. So um, yeah, it was it was hard to, to find groups that are regularly getting together because of the sheer distance between people in the Northern Territory. Right, so you, you got onto the internet and that's how you started meeting people. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, sorry to interrupt, that you mentioned, Helen, that it was, a, there's a, a whole seasonal component to it because in contemporary paganism um, in Australia, we have to, because it's been imported from the Northern Hemisphere, we have to adjust it and that's kind of a big deal in Australia. Um, and people initially didn't used to do that. Um, and then some people would go, oh, I don't understand, you know, the Sabbaths, 
am I supposed to do it on this date? And eventually now it's quite common knowledge that, you know, you would, you would swap the, um, you move it six months ahead or you flip it, but it's still not accurate. Like really the wheel of the year is kind of a general uh, model and it's not really accurate. And people like, I guess, the Druids in Australia with Julie Brett and co, and I've worked on it um, as well. And other people, I mean, um, Roxanne Bodsworth have, we're trying to look at, you know, really regional seasonal festivals because the Indigenous Australians didn't, you know, a, what's a seasonal marker? They would look at, say, the flowering of a tree, the stingrays are doing something and there's a certain constellation, but not, and it's really, you just agree on seasonal markers. Obviously they exist, but which ones are you going to agree on and things like that? So, so the wheel of the year, which is, you know, the foundation of modern paganism is, it's not even really accurate in the Northern hemisphere, but it's a nice model. And it's a very tidy model and it's a good model to start off from. Mm. Right. So, when you were making this film, you were learning all this stuff that Caroline's talking about. You're learning all this stuff, or you had some idea of it already. Yeah, I started off, I read as many books as I could. And then once I had sort of a basic idea of, of the different elements, uh, yeah, I did a ton of reading over six months. Then I started, I felt sort of brave enough to start contacting people. And yeah. Okay. so. so Carolyn, when you when you were contacted, what did you think? What was your first response? Oh well, I'm quite used to talking to. Um, we get media interest a lot, um, and actually, that's I think one of the stumbling blocks with pagans because they, Helen's a you know a documentary maker or a filmmaker. She's not the media, and a, a lot of pagans are like, oh, the media they misrepresent us, and people were worried about. You know, some people who didn't know what Helen would, was doing were kind of worried that, oh, she's the media and she's, you know, how's she going to represent us? But, um, yeah, I just, because um, I'm quite used to people contacting me for stuff. So, um, yeah, but I also, when Helen contacted me, I hadn't heard of some of the people that she'd been working with already. And so I kind of became aware of them through her. So yeah, I've met people through this. Well, I haven't actually met them yet. I've only know them on social media. I'm talking about the Druids. Uh, obviously I know Druids, but I don't know the ones that, I've met Casey, but I haven't met Julie. Yeah. Well, so, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, so I just thought, oh yeah, that sounds interesting. Cause I like talking about the topic anyway. So I'm happy if people with sincere interest, uh, you know, want to ask questions and stuff. Okay, so this the film has actually added to the the your experience of the community anyway across the across Australia. Yes, and I think lots of people, um, most people are pretty pleased with it because um, you know pagans are so worried that they're going to be portrayed as evil, and um, <laughs> and even my mum. Um, she watched the, the Compass half hour version. She goes, oh, I see. It's not about sacrificing babies. And I said, I said, for God's sake, for how many years have you been hearing about paganism and you're still suggesting, you're saying you still don't know what it's about. She's going, no. And other people don't know what it's about either. And she, so she could see from the, um, the half hour version, she, she could see, I just see it's a nice, you know, honouring the seasons and self-development thing. And I'm like, yes, that's right. Um, so it's been very educational. Um, pagans love that. They love good publicity. They hate bad publicity. But, yeah, I think it's, I mean, and, Helen, you had to cut out so much stuff, didn't you? But that it could have been giant, couldn't it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we pretty much used most, like, every sort of shoot that we did Pretty much, there's only a few shoots that we did that we didn't use, um, but pretty much something from every shoot. Um, yeah, because we had such a limited budget, so we had to, and it was good that in a way that we were struggling for little scraps of funding all the time so that it really made us work out exactly what we needed to capture. So we did include everything, a scene from every shoot pretty much. Did, yeah. did, as you got involved in making the film and talking to the various people in the film, did you feel a sense of duty about the way you were going to represent them? 
Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I always set out to make something positive because I don't really want to get involved, you know, because there's so much time and energy and you, you put so much into making a film, like something that you feel a bit negative or ambivalent about, I don't know, it wouldn't really interest me. So I did feel strongly about it starting out, but then then you meet people, you make friendships and you, yeah, so there's a real responsibility to do the best, you know, make the best um, film you can. Yeah, for sure. And also it was very nerve wracking showing, like I show the rough cut and thinking, oh, you know, I hope it, it's well received by the people in it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, you mentioned raising money to make it. So how did you fund it? Um, we started off, well, Screen Territory were fantastic, but because it's not filmed in the, in, uh, in the Territory, apart from a few scenes, um, so there's only so much funding we could get. Um, so we got a bit of development funding from Screen Territory. Um, and then, what did we do? We, <laughs> well, we had... Um, we had, because we had a half hour um, a license agreement with Compass, that enabled us to go for producer equity program funding. Um, yes. But really, we didn't have any production funding. We, my partner's a filmmaker as well, so that's great in that he understood the, the struggle. And so we put a bit of our own um, money into the film to yeah to get the production and then we had funding for post-production but yeah we were really sort of scraping through but yeah i mean this documentary no one's doing it to make money really are they of course. <laughs> yeah obviously though you, I mean, you traveled a lot you traveled the territory down to newtown and down yeah. to melbourne and so on so you've yeah, been but, you know all over talking to people yes. yeah that was great and adelaide adelaide hills and um Doug, Doug Ezzi, he's in the academics with Caroline, the film, he, he's in Tasmania, but he travelled to Melbourne when we did the first shoot with Caroline. And, um, okay. Yeah, but yes, a bit, it, yeah, it was a bit pricey, a lot of travel, but yeah, it was great to... And obviously, once word got out among the community uh, that you were doing this, people had seen that you were researching and stuff. Presumably, people started actually getting more excited and coming forward. And Yes. Um, in fact, it, yeah, yeah, it certainly. Uh oh. You've frozen. Uh oh. I think he's frozen. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, I think he's back. back. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll obviously um, this. Uh, so um, you, can, you, can you start again from the top of that one? Oh, yes. So, um, yes. So as the, as the project went on, um, it did um, gather more interest from the community, but more actually when I was editing, I was getting a few inquiries when we'd already finished filming. Um, but really we wanted to stay with, just a few central people and feature just a few people. Um, so that, because I mean, there are so many different traditions. I think David Garland said there are thousands, Caroline, probably like, or at least hundreds in Australia. So yeah, we just wanted to, rather than get confusing for people who are not from a pagan background, just focus on um, the two largest, probably the two largest. Yeah. Right, about spiritual beliefs, and if you were raised with any spiritual beliefs or had any spiritual beliefs before you started the film? Um, no, I mean, sorry, I wasn't raised in, um, I guess, in any particular religion. Um, but yes, I certainly got spirituality, but I don't know, I can't really pinpoint it to a particular religion or anything like that. Um, so it was certainly a strong interest of mine, anything... Um, yeah, things, the workings beyond everyday life, yeah. Okay, so when, you, when you're doing this film and you're meeting these people and these practitioners and so on, did you start feeling like akin to that? Did you start kind of a quest of your own? Did you start engaging with these kind of things in your own, you know, I guess um, using the world through a magical lens in some way? 
Yes, I, well, I guess I started, I, I, I got more awareness of, of certain things that I was experiencing through the, through um, the filming. Um, so, but I guess I didn't, I mean, I didn't start doing any rituals and I've often thought, oh, you know, I, I can really appreciate other rituals. Why, why don't I, I think maybe I'm just very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to be crafty, you've got to organize things and have tools and that sort of that stuff. And I guess it just, <laughs> just, that, yeah, that's all I can think of, really. <laughs> Lazy. Okay, so Caroline, what was it like for you having someone come in and documenting you who you've established a relationship of trust? Do you want them to, I guess you can't evangelise, but is there a sense in which you're hoping they learn from the experience and you're hoping the viewers from the film will learn from, learn about the community and so on from the film? Yeah, well, I, I have very specific ideas about ancient and modern pagan religions. Um, so I hope, I try and get that across. Um, you can't say everything you think uh, because, because there's so many different, I'm rolling my eyes here, because there's so many different forms of paganism. Um, sometimes you have to speak in a generic manner because as Helen said before, you know, you've got to be kind of a bit of an insider or, or someone who's, who studies it as an academic to understand that all the different sub branches and someone's going to get offended with something you said. So I just try and speak generically, but I try and put forth what I'm, what I think is important. And I, what I think really is, I think all the neo-pagan groups really have, what they have in common is that it's a, it's a very, it's a material religion. It's obviously, it's an earth-based nature religion. Um, and it makes you more in touch with the the landscape and the sky and the outdoors. Although a lot of neo-paganism is practiced inside, um, but the the you know it's based on um, the natural world rather than. Although there's superhuman beings involved, there as I said in the documentary, there. Um, well, I don't know if I said this exactly, but they're they're anthropomorphic manifestations of. Um, natural forces and cultural ideals so behind that is the natural world and that's what i'm i'm interested in so because the druids in the i'm just talking to hell now the druids in the documentary tend to look like they're the super environmentalists but the um wiccans and witches are as well but i think wiccans and witches tend to be a bit more um concerned with with magic but then you know the druids in that in the documentary specifically mention magic as well. So um, there's a lot of crossover. Um, so, but I guess with, with Wicca and or witchcraft and Druidry, they are quite similar and they're both kind of, well, the boomed in the 20th century, let's put it that way. Although Druids, they weren't really neo-pagans though, the Druids that were, you know, went back to the 1700s. Um, but then, you know, the ancient Druids of Britain, yes, they were pagan. But um, contemporary, you know, 20th century Druids are more pagan than than, seven, than yeah, 17th or 18th century Druids. Um, just because I was feeling a bit competitive, I was going, oh, Wicca only goes back to the 1950s, but look at the Druids. They're saying they go back to the 1700s. I'm like, well, which Druids are you talking about? So, again, getting into minutia, because I know the popular, the, the, um, what was it? The, the populace, is that the right word? They don't care, they often can't tell the difference between, you know, the minutiae of Wiccan witchcraft, polemic witchcraft, you know, Italian witchcraft or whatever. They just, they go, yeah, yeah, whatever, it's witchcraft. We don't care what the difference is and we can't tell anyway. So unless someone makes really, you know, really explains them. So that was just <laughs> a long answer to what you just asked me. And also, I guess, Something that came through strongly for me was um, paganism as a way to um, like for self exploration and self empowerment. How I think Doug Ezzy talks about it in the film. How you might tell yourself something and understand it cognitively, but you might need these rituals where you experiencing a, a different um, sort of consciousness to actually 
have changed. I thought that sort of hit home as well through the sort of filming. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, because you sort of commit to it if you enact it in ritual. I mean, part of it, you'd be kind of deluding yourself if you said, oh, I'm going to do a ritual to achieve this thing or to do some sort of self-transformation and then you actually didn't even try. Um, so in a way, ritual is committing yourself more to the thing that you're trying to do and it externalises it. It's, you know, it manipulates symbolic objects that, that mean what it is that you're trying to achieve. So it's like a way of externalising your brain <laughs> and manipulating it with objects, you know, and, and, you know, things like fire, water, air, earth, etc. cetera. Um, and, yeah, so I guess, yeah, it is a, well, I guess it's change in accordance with your will. Um, that's what magic is. I think also with the, the thing that I got from the film also is a sense of community. So it's about, it's about magic and changing things for your will, but it's also about that, that shared experience. And there's, you know, that, that sense of community. And I think that's, that seems to me to be quite important as well in the way that came through in the film. Yeah. That, no, no, did you I was, you want to say something? No, I, no, you go. You say that is absolutely true because paganism. When you get into paganism, you go, "Oh my God, I've got all these new friends." It's unbelievably sociable, and in fact, sometimes it's more sociable than anything. But that's okay. Um, yes, it's it's extremely sociable, um, which is good, it, and it is a good way to make friends quickly. I'm not sure what that's like in other religions because I haven't really ever, you know, joined another religion. Um, yeah, but definitely it's, it's, and pe people are, although it's, there can be huge bitch fights or witch bitch fights or bitchcraft. Um, it's also can be very supportive. And I mean, ideally it is more supportive than, um, arguing about um, tiny little differences and things like that. Yeah, but I, that, that, I think that's something that to me really came across in the film is that supportive nature and so on and, and, and the community and the sense of shared ritual and the way that shared ritual creates that sense of community. You know, and I think that's something that I thought the film, the film did quite, quite well, the way it created that and showed you that. You know, to me that was, yeah, you said at the top of the conversation about this idea of, you know, how are you going to be represented? And I thought that was what was interesting to me watching the film, was it's representing this diverse people coming together as this kind of communal experience, which I thought was really interesting. Yes, I'll just point out that she could have made a film of... <laughs> she could have done this. No, she could have made a film just of, of, of solitary practitioners because they are really the majority. Um, so, yeah. Yes. Would it, yes. Hard to, um, well, I guess a different story, but yeah, hard to yeah. get the themes across, um, just through solitary. Well. Yeah. So, and also, yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, it would be a completely different film if you did solitary and, um, I mean, there'd obviously be less people to look at in the film and um yeah and I mean it certainly is the group activities are a big part of it and often people are solitary and only come together for seasonal festivals um, but other people are in permanent groups but most pagans are you know numerical wise um are solitary practitioners mm -hmm primarily but then when we say solitary practice sounds like really weird like maybe it's better to say domestic they do domestic like you know with the ancient romans or greeks you know you've got domestic cult in your house and then you might go out to a festival um for zeus or something like that so yeah i think solitary practice sounds weird <laughs> but that's kind of the terminology that is used so you, you're making this film, you're involved, you're involved in all this stuff. Are you thinking about, yeah, you've got this, people are going to watch this and you're, yeah, are you thinking about how the audience are going to be taking this film? 
and what they're going to be taking away from the film, Helen? Yes, I guess um, because I was sort of aiming it at a broad audience who might not know anything much about paganism. So I was trying to cover some of the main themes. Um, and actually, initially, I was trying to cover the Wheel of the Year, and that became a bit of a bind, trying to, to edit in that sort of um, order and and also just we couldn't we didn't have the, the budget to cover everything so it still loosely follow what follows sort of the European seasons as, as top markers but it sort of only drops in on a few um, um, sabbats um, but yes for sure I was I was thinking about how to get the main themes across and um, yeah and keep the energy up throughout the film yeah. Okay. So, I mean, having community ritual helps with that a lot because you've got all that energy and you know things like the English ale it's so festive and celebratory and and fun so things like that with with groups work well I think and have you had people come up to you since seeing the film and wanting to ask you about 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 becoming a pagan I guess um, I've had a few comments of people have uh, they've gone gone home and started googling paganism <laughs> and trying to find out more so yeah that's nice um and people have said oh no i never knew and as one person said are they real people or are they actors <laughs> are they real people, <laughs> they <real> people? <laughs> yeah. See, so, that just shows that just shows i just it's common knowledge to me i'm like yes yes paganism yes but even that my mother apparently says she doesn't know anything about it i'm like how I don't how can you not and then you're saying people come up and say are they real people yes um but I find that astonishing but that's really interesting as well mm -hmm. you know because I'm I'm just so used to it it's just normal for me yeah but yes I I think they're real people <laughs> that, that's interesting isn't it that, that, that the way that people I guess they are so unfamiliar they they're watching it on the screen so it must be pretend they can't you know that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird kind of, yeah, that's strange. I, that's the weird. Yeah, I can't imagine asking that question. <laughs> so, uh, and Caroline, have you had people coming up to you and saying that they want to get more involved or they're asking questions of you since things? Um, not really the, um, not really anyone from the public. Um, not from the film um, or from the compass version i've had um you know someone from a radio program um kind of wanted to include me in an interview about why young people are getting into witchcraft um but um not really because not really from the film because i'm i'm already available from elsewhere so and also really we've been um you know in internal pagan chit chat We've all kind of been talking to each other about it. Um, so I, yeah, haven't really noticed. I mean, it's early days though as well. Um, it's more that people are kind of impressed with the film. Um, and then I've seen people, they go, oh, what did you think of the film? And I said, um, oh, the, oh, what did you think of the compass? Um, and I've said, I've said something and they go, oh, were you in it? And I'm like, yes, yes, I was in it. Um, Cause they obviously haven't watched it yet. Uh, so, yeah. I so guess. it just hasn't been, it, it, it's been at the Darwin Film Festival and yeah, we're really excited it's at Revelation. So it hasn't really, it's I guess early days for getting people's reactions. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, presumably, presumably it will go out onto the festival circuit. Yeah, well, I think the, the next one's Brighton Rocks um, in the UK later this month. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. Yeah, we need to publicise that because a lot of British pagans are already, you know, and also British uh, academic scholars that study paganism are quite interested in watching it because they've seen, you know, the little short on the or not the shorts what are they called the little promotional um clips um on facebook and stuff like that so yeah and it's it is quite unusual to have a respectful uh documentary about paganism there's been 
you know, a few other documentaries. They're pretty old, aren't they, Helen? Those yeah, like so other temples, other gods. Recent. Hmm? Yeah, I haven't been, found anything recent when I was researching. Um, and there's really not that many. And there's a lot of very amateur stuff. So, and then there's a lot of, you know, sensationalised journalistic coverage um, where you, so we weren't, would you say, Helen, I mean, because with, you know, with when journalists cover you, you sort of don't know what they're going to do and that it's, if they don't like you, they can make you look like an idiot and if they like you, you know, they make you look good. But um, did you th think, I mean, we didn't really have to kind of, suck up to you or anything so that you didn't you know make us look like idiots <laughs> and as you said before you did you didn't want to make us look no, bad I but, but I mean I, felt, I mean, you know we yeah. had more we not that we had control or you know when I say we I mean the pagan people in the um I guess I'll ask you a question like was there things that you wanted people to do that they didn't want to do or vice versa no, I think, um, but I think people are still nervous. I th like, I think quite a few people involved, they were still very nervous because also say I organised something through one person and then they're gathering other people together, then they're responsible for those, they feel responsible for those other people, they're getting them into this and, and they don't really know me. Like we've had, we might've had a lot of conversations, but uh, often we were filming um, the first time we'd met in person. So it was very trusting and very um, generous of the people involved. Like the first time we met um, Tim Ospagan and Louise Valcoven was the Skyclad ritual. So we hadn't met them before and, and they were taking their clothes off and doing a ritual in front of the camera, which is, I mean, it, 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 not uh, they'd certainly done their research beforehand and they like Tim had talked to me a lot and watched other short films I'd made you know, looked at the tone of those sorts of things but still I just think it's it's very brave and uh, of them to do that yeah yeah mm -hmm. I think as a filmmaker to have that much to be able to get that much trust from people it's a, it's, a, it's really important you know to make a, in making a documentary like this that you can get that trust you know yeah I think I think and I think that that lets people open up and it's what makes a documentary like this work is because you have that exchange going on with the subjects and the director yes yeah i mean it's good that like caroline you guys to a large extent directed what was going to be in the film so because you know like you might tell me about like julie might tell me about an event that's coming up and um and so it was collaborative in that sense and um yeah, and Caroline um, certainly gave a lot of input in who to, who to talk to and that sort of thing. Um, but the fact is, we just love talking about the topic. So we're happy if someone wants to go, <laughs> I'm going to make a documentary about this. It's like, yay, this is good. And this is good. You might want to look at that because that's really interesting. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's fun for everyone. And I mean, there's yeah. certainly some people who, could, who couldn't be involved because of, you know, they're, if they're working with um, children, working with the government and anywhere where they might face discrimination from being involved, uh, should yeah. be shown publicly as a pagan. So there's certainly still that discrimination and um, going around. And, and and then a few people who, who'd who had very bad experience with, with the media in the past and they were like, no way. But yeah, but as you said, Caroline, yeah, people generally are really happy to... Yeah, but that's a good point because people still really can't come out in a lot of cases because even though paganism, neo-paganism has been around for so long and even especially modern, you know, witchcraft is so huge now, I find it baffling that people wouldn't kind of just go, oh, yes, I know what that is, that's fine. Because I've been lucky because I've worked, I worked in an artistic job where they were happy for me to be a weird pagan and then worked in an academic job where we can kind of do what we like, especially if we turn it into our academic research. So I was able, I'm able to be, you know, public about it, but some people are like, you know, high school teachers um, or, you know, as Helen said, work with young children they don't want anyone to get the wrong idea even though there is no wrong idea but people just have this weird misunderstanding of paganism 
Um, but another point is that Wiccans, British traditional Wiccans are very secretive. So they probably would not allow themselves to be filmed in a documentary anyway, because their practice is traditionally secret. Yes. You agree? Yeah, that's, yeah, that was for sure. I did approach a few traditional Wiccans in the course, yeah. Like usually she wouldn't be able to film, um, you know, initiation rituals if they were real ones. Although, you know, in the 70s, 60s and 70s, uh, Alex Sanders and Ma um, Maxine Sanders, yeah. um, they were initiating people en masse and getting filmed doing it, doing everything. But then a lot of people think that they were, you know, unethical to have allowed themselves to be filmed. And anyway, secret is, secrecy is huge in Wicca. So, yeah. Um, Again, the public might go, well, what's what's the difference between witchcraft and wicker? And it's like <sighs> that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a witchcraft is wicker is a type of witchcraft. Let's just say that. So you've got uh, all this stuff. Are you thinking of uh, with this knowledge you have, thinking of making anything else around this topic, Helen? Is this something you pursue further, or have you yeah. finished finished with this topic now? Because it seems to me that. I'm just hearing you two talk. There's so many ideas here. Yeah, well, I haven't got any ideas at the moment, but yeah, I'm certainly open to doing to doing more for sure. Yeah, yeah, because it is, is a huge topic. And like Carolyn's probably brimming with ideas. <laughs> but I don't really ever think about film ideas much. Um, except when you said something the other day, you said, "Oh, tell me if you have any ideas," and I'm like. Oh, well, I guess I'll just come up with an idea right now. But um, yeah, I never really, my son actually likes making films um, that he's, you know, he's only just kind of, he's only 21. So he's just kind of experimenting at the moment. But um, yeah, it doesn't really occur to me to make films um, just because I've never made them. But, um, oh, but I can certainly think of a zillion things to make films about if someone asked me I'd go oh gosh well there's a zillion things to make them about but there's also a zillion things to write books about or whatever art form we're talking about I guess you know it could make an opera we could do an opera <laughs> or um oh so many things because it is a theatrical I mean it's a theatrical activity religion it, unless you're a Zen Buddhist and you're just meditating on a white wall, um, especially paganism, it's got lots of props. Yeah, yeah. It's got good scenery. It's got costumes or else it's got the costume of nudity. And um, it's got theatrical movements and theatrical words and that sort of thing. But so, so is the Catholic Church, except for the nudity. <laughs> 